Hello economics students. We are now approaching week three, so we're almost at the halfway point of the course. And these courses do very go very quickly, so just stay on top of things and you'll do fine. Good discussion again last week with the elasticity examples. Uh, this week I'm going to have a little forum discussion out there to kind of ask you to think about uh, something in your organization where you maybe increased expenses to try to attract more customers or try to uh, reduce cost or try to increase your productivity or efficiency you know to ultimately get the, the right product or service to your customers so uh, you have an opportunity to do that this week also this week we do have two chapters on cost they're brief chapters you should be able to read through those pretty quickly and we'll also have the exam out there too so I'll have that in the word document and what you will do is just in a one-page document just put your name on it and you'll have one is C, two is C, three is C, four is C, so forth. Just give me all your letter responses. So don't reprint the exam. And this exam uh, is that you'll complete it individually and then uh, you'll just submit your responses by the end of next Sunday. So I should have that out there um, by Monday at the latest at Sunday probably. So, well with chapter 12, a couple things we need to review. Uh, with this chapter, we kind of first uh, think in terms of you know profit and an accountant would say that profit is simply total revenue minus total cost and that is your profit now economists would come along and say you need to take into consideration your opportunity cost so if you require a 10 percent rate of return and you're only making a six percent rate of return you're not really making a true profit you're, you're falling short of investors expectations or if you gave up your salary to start a business and your business did not uh, exceed the amount of salary you had before, it was really a bad decision. So, and I think you all take finance in the future, and you'll discuss things as net present value and economic value added. And it's really a way for the investors to see hey, is the corporation or the business really meeting that opportunity cost for investors? So, it is possible for a business to be profitable but still have an economic loss. And if you cover both explicit and implicit cost, you make what is called a zero economic profit or normal profit and that's a good thing even today if you're making a normal profit you're meeting the investors expectations also you're going to look at cost curves uh, with the production function uh, we look at the relationship that if I have land labor and capital and it's fixed and I start to add say more units of labor you know initially you would start to see production go up and at some point the slope of that curve actually changes and that's when diminishing marginal returns kick in and Diminishing marginal returns is because that I just can't keep adding more and more workers in a fixed plant space and time. Expect that productivity is going to go infinitely up. You know, there's going to be a maximum that we're going to reach. But we use a term in economics called increasing at a decreasing rate. So let's say that I hire you all, my students, as margarita workers, and I'm making margaritas. And maybe I mean well, and I, I try real hard, but I only make one margarita in an hour. And let's say that uh, another student comes along and our production goes from one to 10 margaritas. Well, that's a nine unit change. That's a marginal change. And let's say that I add one more worker and the production goes up to 15. Well, now the change is still positive. It's a positive five, but it's a decrease from the change before. So it's increasing and decreasing rate. That's kind of, the, in the textbook, they talk about that change in the production function. Kind of slope is changing and it kind of goes the other direction. And at some points it reaches the maximum, I find the right amount of workers. But if I keep adding workers and given plant and space and size, probably we're going to be arguing with each other or just uh, have people standing around and we're actually, our production will go down. So we can see marginal changes actually come negative. The rest of this chapter looks at the shape of these cost curves, that whether it's uh, average total cost, average variable cost, fixed cost. Uh, firms always have some fixed cost. If we take the fixed cost divided by output, that's called average fixed cost. It's typically approaching the horizontal axis, but never becomes zero. A lot of times we call spreading overhead cost. And then we're going to have uh, average variable cost and average total cost. And again, the reason this U-shape exists is because that law of diminishing margin returns and that production function. We just can't keep expecting that I keep on adding some input to the production process and our output is going to keep going up and up and up. So we're going to find, uh, if we hire more and more margarita workers, that eventually uh, our costs keep going up, but our actual output starts declining. So we're making ourselves worse off. 
And uh, next week, let's all tie in with the market structures and we kind of tie revenues and costs together to make those decisions. So for now, just kind of understanding how these curves are calculated. Uh, the later chapter looks at kind of the dimensions of cost. There are what is called economies of scale, decreasing per unit cost, constant uh, cost, and, and diseconomies of scale. Maybe you're getting uh, too large. You're trying to distribute everything all over the United States. You know, Budweiser doesn't have just one plant in St. Louis. They have plants throughout the United States in many distribution centers because they probably experience large diseconomies of scale by trying to produce all the beer in St. Louis. Um, other things mentioned too is about technology, learning by doing. Um, there's a lot of other variety of factors that go into the production process. And, and the interesting thing in today's world, how change is occurring so quickly, really you have to be thinking about your production process and what the product or service should be, what the customer wants all the time now. Because if you're slow to react, um, within five years your market or your product is no longer viable in the market. So. We, we try, business try to be frugal, they try to figure out the lowest cost of doing these things, they try to be economically efficient, and you read about technical efficiency too. You know, it is possible that we can produce the margaritas with, say, two workers and one machine, or two machines and one worker, and that's too, both technically efficient, because we're getting the same amount of margaritas, but it's the uh, way we can do this at the lowest possible cost to increase profitability and to do it in an efficient manner. So. All right, well, have a great week. Uh, again, we'll do this next week for week four, but otherwise, uh, send me an email if you have questions, and take care.